Chapter 22 The Army of Red Goblins One day Mother said that she would be out for the whole day, and if the children liked, they could have the old saucepan man to tea and any other two friends they had made. Good, said Jo. We'll ask Moonface and Silky. Bessie wrote a note and gave it to the little white goat to take to Moonface. The white goat was a wonderful creature. It gave the most delicious milk and it ran errands. And if any of the hens got out, it found them and drove them back. It was most useful. The goat took the note in its mouth and ran off to the enchanted wood. It came to the faraway tree and bleated to the red squirrel, who peeped out from his hole low down in the trunk. The squirrel took the note and bound it up to Moonface with it. Moonface was delighted and shouted down to Silky, who came up and read it. We'll ask the old saucepan man as soon as Mr. What's-His-Name is asleep, said Moonface. The children haven't asked Mr. What's-His-Name, so Saucepan will have to creep down the tree without us telling him why. They sent a note back to the little goat, saying that they would arrive at three o'clock that afternoon. The children were so excited. Mother had gone by that time, and the girls began to make the cottage look pretty with jars of flowers. Bessie baked some chocolate cakes, and Fanny made some toffee. Joe cut bread and butter. We'll have a fine tea, he said. I hope the saucepan man won't be too deaf this afternoon. By three o'clock, everything was ready. The children were neat and clean. The table looked fine, with its bread and butter, cakes and toffee. Bessie went to the gate to look for the visitors. She couldn't see them coming down the lane. They are late, she called out to the others. I expect the saucepan man has got tangled up with his saucepans or something. Half past three came and no visitors. The children were rather disappointed. Perhaps Moonface read my letter wrongly and thought it was four o'clock, said Bessie. But when four o'clock came and still no Moonface, Silky or the saucepan man arrived, they got really worried. I do hope nothing has happened, said Bessie, feeling upset. There's all our nice tea and nobody to eat it. We'll wait a bit longer, then we'll eat our share, said Joe. So when five o'clock came around and nobody had arrived, the children sadly ate half the tea themselves. Something's happened, said Joe gloomily. Oh dear, what do you think it is, said Bessie. Could we go see? No, said Joe. Not now, anyway. Mother will be back soon. We'd better go tonight. The rope is let down the tree then for us to pull ourselves up by, and it won't take long to climb up. We really must find out what's wrong, said Bessie, clearing away. We'll take their share of the tea with us. So that night, when it was quite dark, the three children slipped out of bed, dressed, and crept out the back door. They had to take a lantern, for there was no moon that night. Joe swung it in front of him, and they could see where to tread. Down the dark lane they went, over the ditch, and into the enchanted wood. The trees were whispering very loudly together tonight. Wish, 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 they said, and the peacocks were crowing across the valleys. Oh, how I wish I knew what they were saying, said Fanny. Come on, said Joe. We'd better not be too long, Fanny. We want to be back by daylight. They made their way through the dark wood. As there was no moon, there were no fairy folk about at all that night. The children soon came to the faraway tree and looked for the rope. But there was no rope at all this time. And they had to begin to climb up as usual, holding on to the boughs very carefully, for it was very difficult to see. Before they had got farther than two branches up, a strange thing happened. Someone caught hold of Joe's shoulder and pushed him roughly down. Joe fell, caught hold of the lowest branch and just saved himself in time. Who did that? he cried angrily. He 
he undid his lantern from his belt where he had put it whilst climbing and flashed it up the tree calling to bessie and fanny to go no further and standing grinning in the lower branches of the tree were four red goblins with pointed ears wide mouths and wicked little eyes no one is allowed to come up the tree now said one of the goblins and no one is allowed to come down either but why not asked joe in astonishment because it's our tree now your tree what nonsense said joe we've come to see our friends who live in the tree let us pass no said the goblins and they grinned widely you can't come up it's no good said a tiny voice beside joe the goblins have taken everyone prisoner in the tree if you go up they'll only push you down or take you prisoners too joe flashed his lantern downwards and the children saw that it was the little red squirrel speaking the one who looked after the cushions for moonface hello said joe do tell me what's happened i can't understand it oh it's easy enough to understand said the squirrel the land of the red goblins came to the top of the faraway tree the goblins found the hole that leads down through the clouds and poured down it they took every one prisoner moonface and everyone else are locked up in their houses in the tree trunk i can tell you mr what's his name and the angry pixie have nearly battered their doors down in rage but why have the goblins locked them up asked bessie in surprise well they want some magic spells that the tree dwellers know said the squirrel they are going to keep them all locked up till they tell the spells isn't that dreadful oh dear said fanny whatever can we do to help them i don't know said the squirrel sadly if only you could get up to them you might be able to make some plan but the goblins won't let anyone up the tree whish, 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 whispered the trees loudly you know i can't help feeling that the trees want to tell us something tonight said bessie suddenly i always feel that they are whispering secrets to one another but tonight i feel that they want to tell them to us i shouldn't be surprised said the squirrel the faraway tree is king of the wood and now that trouble has come to it all the other trees are angry perhaps they want to help us whish, 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 said the trees loudly put your arms around a tree trunk and press your left ear to the tree said the squirrel suddenly i have heard it said that that is the only way to hear a tree's words each of the children found a small tree they put their arms around the trunks and pressed their left ears to the trees and then they could quite clearly hear what the trees were whispering help the faraway tree dwellers the leaves whispered help them but how can we whisper back the children eagerly tell us go up the slippery slips said the trees in their leafy voices go through the trap-door and up the slippery slip oh cried the children at once of course why ever didn't we think of it ourselves shh said the squirrel in alarm don't let the goblins hear you what did the trees say they said we were to go through the trap-door and up the slippery slip said joe in a low voice we can get right up to moonfaces then it's a wonderful idea come on then said bessie and the three of them ran to the faraway tree and felt about for the little trap-door another adventure